When it comes to sponsored and paid product reviews, I don't think that you, the audience, are getting the full picture. I'm contractually obligated to review this part. I got these parts for free, I get to keep them after the video, and I'm being paid a fee for the time and effort it takes to produce this video. I've not been asked to only say positive things about this product, I've been asked to give my genuine feedback. This is the most information I've ever disclosed about a paid product review. But in all honesty, it should probably be the bare minimum. According to YouTube, however, just check the box, mark paid promotion, and you're good to go. I think we can and should do better. The first and most obvious problem with paid product placement is that it puts artificial constraint on an otherwise free and creative process. This is why you may hear people talk about product that aligns with their channel or their personal brand. In the case of these Perry Parts bump stops, the alignment problem is almost a non-issue. They're kind of a disruptor in this industry and I've been interested in their product for a while. But there's no doubt that product placement videos turn YouTubers into what I call pretend consumers. When I do a sponsored product, I get the product first. Then after that comes all the researching and Googling and figuring out how to justify the purchase or occasionally I reach out to the company after researching a product. But in my opinion, there's really no replacement for buying things with your own hard earned money. See, it's very difficult to replicate all the research and depth of insight that comes from deliberating over a product and then purchasing it with your own money. If Bill Steen sends me shocks for free, I might never discover all the nuanced reasons for picking their product over a different suspension setup. Sponsored content can often lack expertise and insight because of this. And this isn't just an opinion, it's a working theory. Take a look at some YouTube channels, mine included, channels that do product reviews. On my channel, my best product review videos are always on products that aren't sponsored. Sponsored. Bill Steen shocks, my soft topper reviews, stereo install, my tire reviews. All those videos are products that I bought with my own money. These videos have combined for hundreds of thousands of views. My best sponsored product review only has about 30,000 views. Ever watch a YouTuber repeat themselves about how cool and amazing and how cool and awesome and amazing and cool a $20 off-road light is all to the tune of 207 views and zero comments? That's sponsored content. Perry Parts, Duro Bumps. Oh, yeah. The other thing that YouTubers such as myself succumb to is a positivity bias. I have a tough time saying negative things about someone who gave me a product for free. I don't know why I feel this pressure. No one's ever asked this of me. Maybe I'm concerned that it'll hurt my opportunities to get a new product in the future. So in order to make sure that I get more free products in the future, let's play some super smooth B-roll and go over only the good things about this product. Perry Parts uses a unique 3D printing process unlike any of the other manufacturing processes or materials on the bump stop market. It also makes use of holes, or what they call compression damping ports, to change your damping experience with varying speed. The bump stop should flex easily at low speeds, allowing air out of the ports, while the ports build up pressure and dissipate energy on high speed impact. These materials and air ports are the type of engineering that you won't find on a competitor like Durobumps. Different, of course, doesn't mean better, which is why I'd recommend you read the articles on their website and watch their third-party testing videos. Through this third-party testing, it's proven that these bump stops have incredibly good damping capabilities and perform better than its competitors. And Perry Parts bump stops come in at an incredibly competitive price. Audiences may not know this, but influencers are often inundated and flooded, flooded with marketing emails from all kinds of companies hoping to promote their product. Even the smallest influencers probably end up ignoring 99% of these emails. They're companies and products we simply aren't interested in. I don't want to review your cat hair remover, and I don't want to make a camping video where I buy all the equipment from one site. And the good news is, all those creators that you like to watch are ignoring the vast majority of all those marketing emails. I have a lot of respect for channels like Project Farm or the Outdoor Gear Review. Channels where they don't really accept sponsored content and they certainly don't have an agenda, that may be the ideal model. Replicating some of the videos that these channels produce would cost me more than I can make on YouTube in an entire year. So for those of us who want to try out products, maybe sponsored content is a necessary evil that we have to live with. And it also does provide companies real opportunities to test and work with creators to create better products. In that spirit, let's dive deeper into this bump stop test and see what I can tell you guys before you try these for yourselves. For example, something that I didn't quite know or understand coming into this kit is that it wouldn't just work with a generic U-bolt flip kit. Actually, this is what Perry Parts thought would work. These gaps didn't quite line up with the holes on this uh, flip kit that I have. So a gripe that I would have with the Duro bumps is these captured nuts. They don't seem to hold it, capture the nut super well. The nut was spinning inside of it, and so I had to like really torque and kind of try to dig the nut 
into the side of these dural bumps because the rubber just doesn't hold very well. All right, we are in business. That Perry Parts one goes on to my U-bolt flip kit. And for comparison, here is a rear dura bump compared to the rear bump stop that I have from Perry Parts now. A lot squishier, I feel like, than that one. These are stiffer. This test isn't perfect here since both bump stops start to bend to the side, but at similar levels of force bearing the weight of my truck, the Perry Parts bump stop is a quarter inch taller. It's also about a quarter inch taller than the Dura Bump uncompressed. These results emulate what Perry Parts shows on its website from third party testing. Namely, that under similar forces, the displacement the bump stop experiences is about identical to Dura Bumps. Bump stops aren't a super flashy product. Not a lot of people talk about them and a lot of people neglect them. That being said, I think they're a part of a competent suspension package. So I brought them out to this little section of the desert. We're gonna go hit some whoops and we're gonna see how these bump stops perform. I've got the Perry parts on one half of my truck and I've got the Duro bumps on the other side of my truck. Just a short section of whoops here, kind of see the contours and the shadows. So we'll quick run our truck through that. Standard practice is to place the bump stops on the rear of the two front bump stop locations. There's not a good place to attach my camera back there so we can gauge the engagement of the bump stop by paying attention to how close we get to smacking the OEM front bump stop on the lower control arm. To me, it looks like the dural bump might be allowing slightly more up travel, which is unsurprising given it's the shorter of the two bump stops, but compresses similarly. I love this rear footage. Pay close attention to the biggest hit that each bump stop takes. That Perry Parts bump stop takes a hard hit and absorbs it like a sponge. There's some tremendous flexibility and resiliency in that bump stop and the materials it uses. I feel like the dural bump either didn't get smacked as hard, which is possible, or is just a slightly stiffer bump stop. For both bump stops, I did check and make sure that those U-bolts aren't hitting the upper plate. So that's not a concern here, and that's not affecting our testing. Now, with all that testing done, here's what I can tell you. Bump stops aren't gonna be a Band-Aid for incompetent suspension. They're not gonna really increase the capability of your suspension. What they are gonna do is add comfort on the extreme ranges of your travel. They're gonna protect your suspension, and they're gonna make sure that those bumps hit just a little bit softer. My suspension, is basically bone stock. So these bump stops aren't exactly gonna be a huge performance booster for me. They're gonna add a little bit of comfort and some protection for the suspension on those extreme ranges of my travel. If you want high performance out of your suspension, you're going to have to change out every single component and you're probably gonna end up paying top dollar to do it. And as you get from basic lift kits like mine up into mid travel and eventually long travel, things like bump stops are to become more and more important. But if you're just getting into this and you're just starting out, there's nothing wrong with swapping out your old, your super crusty OEM bump stops for something like these Perry Parts ones. They are gonna add some comfort and they're definitely gonna protect your suspension and help it out.